Hello YouTube friends, welcome to another Sunday video. Now, thank you to everybody who watched the second part of the map making video. The third part should be today, but then the snow came and I took a snow day. And so we've got some lovely snowy uh, stuff coming up now. The lake was sparkling in the sunshine. And I'm reminded that uh, at the beginning of January, I took you for a walk around the lake. So here we are sort of part way through February. So I'm doing that again in this video. Uh, but I just wanted to show you this little project that I'm doing. Uh, so stay, stick around till the end and uh, I'll tell you what I'm knitting here. But I had loads of fun in the snow. It was the most beautiful, beautiful day. Here it comes. <laughs> Hello YouTube friends, I'm back in the spot where I filmed at the very beginning of January and it's sort of halfway through February now and this is the very spot I filmed from last time. There's actually not much change except there's a bit more snow but I'm not going to pretend <laughs> we have snow anything like some of you watching have snow. I know, your snow is up to the window sills and beyond, isn't it? This is a little bit of snow. But I've come out for a walk around the dam today and what I'm really interested in is those lines. Can you see them? There are lines like that, three or four of them, all across the lake. So the lake the dam is a little bit frozen, just a little bit. I wouldn't walk on it, it's not thick enough to do that. But the temperature 
is in uh, minus numbers here and so it is going to get thicker but I'm still not interested in getting out on the dam but I am interested in those lines and what's causing them so I've walked around the dam so that I could find see if I could find each end of them there's about five and they all meet up in a sort of melted bit in the middle no idea what what's making that happen it'll be I'm guessing something to do with the change in temperature of the ice in the night time as it's really really cold and then as it's thawing a bit maybe there's an expansion and a contraction going on along those lines I have no idea but I'm fascinated by them they're really interesting so it's what is it part way through February around about Valentine's Day something like that and it's uh it's cold, it's like this. It's not the kind of snow that you need to shovel or worry about if you have to drive anywhere, but I'm not driving anywhere. It's a bit windy, so I'll stop talking to you now. So it's the next day now and Anna's here so she's going to do some filming for me and it's no it's not stopped snowing so we're having a proper snow day and all the ice on the lake now is covered over with snow so all my mysterious marks are all gone but they're under there somewhere but it looks absolutely fantastic and it's snowing it's properly snowing rather lovely. I'm going to go for a little walk up here. So although the lake is frozen and it's covered in snow, there's still that open bit of water there which is where all the ducks are and the, se the seagulls, have the seagulls gone today? No, no, they're still there. Yeah, so they've still got some open water, which is where the stream comes in, of course. So it would be open until it's very, very cold. Oh, I love it like this. It's just so magical. I'm gonna go a bit further. Can you remember in the summer, last summer, in the middle of the lockdown when the lake was closed for fishing and I took one of those boats out 
uh, and drifted around in the middle of the lake for four hours. I'll maybe leave an i-card in the top right hand corner just to see how different it is today to what it was like then. It was only a few months ago. feel a snow angel coming over me because it's many many years since I made a snow angel so let's find a good spot for that Not a very good snow angel, but it's years since I made one of those. <laughs> I've got my waterproof leggings on, so I'm very sensible. So beautiful. So did you enjoy that? I really enjoyed it. It's still here, the snow's still here. So I may have another sparkly walk out uh, in the snow today. But I'm practically finished with the um, draft excluder that I'm making. So I'll post the third part of that next week. It's not completely finished, uh, but I'll finish that one and edit that one for next Sunday. But I just wanted to show you what I'm doing here. Uh, of an evening when I'm just sitting with the you know the fire on and a cat on my knee. Um, if you're a sock knitter or if you're any sort of knitter you'll have all sorts of scraps and bits of wool that are left over from all sorts of projects. You do don't you? I know you do and so I, I, I've been looking at all of the I've got some bigger bits as well which I bought when Agnes was born thinking I would make her all sorts of things and I did but baby socks and baby things take up so little wool that I have all this left still you know I have big bits of wool left and I've been looking at this for the longest time wondering what to do with it and I've decided that um, I'm going to make I've only done a little tiny bit of it I'm going to make one of these blankets that's called either domino knitting or double decrease or whatever, using up all my, and just pick it up, put it down uh, whenever I feel like doing a few rows of knitting. Now, the thing with knitting with me is it isn't ever going to be hard. I don't like uh, very complicated knitting where you have to look at a pattern. And uh, I mean, I can do that, but I really don't enjoy it very much. I like the sort of thing where your hands are busy with a bit of knitting. But really, the only thing you have to think about is, uh, in this case, is two, uh, knit two together, knit two together, either side of the stitch marker. Now, this is a pattern that's all over the place. You go to Pinterest and put in uh, mitered knitting or double decrease or whatever, and you'll find hundreds of, of them. And the one that I use is by someone called the Knitting Squirrel. And I'll definitely leave a link in the description below to this one because um, uh, I made this blanket, which you're looking at now, for Agnes when she was born. All the, all the while we were waiting for Agnes to arrive, I, I made this blanket uh, and um, all in these beautiful colours, dyed by my friend who lives in the borders, Lindsay. 
So that blanket, I really enjoyed making it. It's time consuming because the wool's very thin, but that's all right. It's not about quick getting a quick finish. It's about just keeping your hands busy and making something with um, yarn that I'm not going to use because the idea with it is you can just add on another bit of yarn if you're halfway through a square and you haven't finished, add on a bit more. It's really, really simple. So this is going to be... Um, ongoing now for a long time it doesn't matter when it's done i really enjoy it give it a go i'll tell you what the genius thing is about it um is there's no sewing up the way that it's constructed you pick up stitches and knit them out from the previous square if you don't know about mitered knitting or double decrease or whatever this is called then I urge you to give it a try because honestly, it's the simplest thing. It's the kind of thing you could knit on the lime green sofa because it, it just uses short needles. Now I'm using these needles, not sponsored. I'm using these needles, which um, are by, let's have a look who are these by. Now I ordered these by mistake. I wanted some sock needles, some wooden sock needles, and I ordered these Knit Pro, they're called Zing. And they are wooden, but with a metal tip. Oh, they are lovely. They are so, so lovely to knit with. Um, you don't need to knit these on double-ended needles. It's a back and forth kind of knitting. Uh, but I'm knitting them on these because it's a small portable project. And, um, and the stitches don't fall off the end. Or if they do, they're easy to pick up. So that's uh, what is going on just sometimes. I like to have lots of projects on the go. You might have noticed... But one project that's coming up really, really soon, in fact, Tuesday, <laughs> over on Patreon, I'm starting the next of the alongs. The first along, which was a journal along, is finished now, and we all made beautiful journals together. But the second along starts this Tuesday, and it's a quilt block. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm really excited about it. I'm getting all the fabric out for it tomorrow, and I'm going to make a start on doing that along. Uh, and so you're very welcome to come and join us there. Plus all the uh, other uh, things that I'm doing on a weekly basis, uh, a different um, themed thing. I explained this a while ago, how the first week I'm making something for Agnes's doll's house. The second week is my cooking challenge, which is going very well indeed. The third week is my son, John, who's doing a special feature on his life and work and what he does. That's John there. <laughs> and the fourth week is um, uh, me improving my embroidery skills with a project I'm doing there. Uh, and so they're all over there as well. So you're very welcome to join us there. But the next along starts on Tuesday, which I'm excited about. So, uh, yeah, have a go at Double Decrease, the Knitting Squirrel. It's a, a um, it's quite a wordy description. It's not... Uh, it's not like a straightforward pattern. You can find the pattern quite easily within, but there's a lot of chat, which I quite like. Uh, yeah, really, really great uh, little um, blog that with the, all those knitting patterns on. So I'm going to carry on knitting now because it's quite late and I'm just going to knit another few rows. That's the other beautiful thing about it is the rows are really short. So you can just knock off a couple of rows while you're waiting for the kettle to boil, that kind of thing. OK, so I'll see you next week with part three of the mat, the finish for the mat project. So I'm sorry if anybody was hoping for that today, but part three is next week. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Bye now.